stepping up to start off the game. Left field, or right fielder, number five, Eric Arado. Arado coming in today, uh, having a strong season. 342 on base percentage out of the left-hand batter's box. And pitch number one is in for a strike. And second pitch of the game launched in the gap to right field. And that'll set up on first base. Eric Arado starting off the contest with a hit for the Huskies. And stepping in, the two hitter, number two, center fielder, Matt Barnes. And that is a high fly ball into right field. And under it is Jake Jarvis for out number one. And now stepping up to the plate, designated hitter number 27, Carlos Aranda. And something worthy of note about this Northern Illinois lineup, Brendan, that's a lot of righties. There's a lot of righties, but one thing about uh, Carlos Aranda, in the last game he hit the, or not in the last game, against, uh, against Kent State, he scored the game-winning winning home run in the 11th inning. So a lot of power coming from Carlos Aranda. Let's see if he can knock one out here. And he'll foul that off. Actually sending the Evo shield off his elbow there. Is the only runner that's reached so far is the only batter with favorable stance to a righty as that ball is lined into center field over the head of Curtis Washington. And that's going to send him running for extra bases. And they're going to be sending one in. And just like that, Northern Illinois gets the assistance on a bad throw, another run coming in, and two will score. Inside as in, the park home run, oh my goodness. Well, the question is, Brendan, is that gonna be scored as an inside the park home run or an error? Because as you're gonna see here in this replay, ball comes off strong, and that was certainly a catchable ball for Curtis Washington. Just lost. And I'll tell you what, Brendan, I haven't ever seen anything like that, have you? I have not. The error and you make it all the way around the bases. I mean, Aranda, he's one of the leading, uh, well, he is the leader in slug percentage for Purdue. Yeah, and then just to review, folks, that is going to be counted as an inside the park home run. As Wade lines up for the one-two pitch. That ball tipped down the third base line. Viola to first and beats the runner for the second out of the inning. Transfer the ball on the shuffle as Mason Kelly steps into bat. As he watches strike one over the corner of the outside of the zone. Yeah, and that ball's popped up and behind home plate for a foul ball. NIU is making good contact with these balls. And the 0-2 count, Wade. And that ball fouled off to the left of the line. Wade out of the windup. Unable to find the outside corner. One, two, count. And a big cut as that'll be a strikeout. Drop third, throw down to first. Easy play made. And the Boilermakers escape, having only given up two. And to start the uh, afternoon off, for Mr. Bonk, he's got to go against left fielder Mike Bolton, Jr. Come on. Come on. 
and showed bunt but pulled back for ball number one. And the pitch fouled off of the bat of Mike Bolton Jr. Unsuccessfully able to put the bunt down. And that pitch just a little low to make it a 2-1 count. And Brendan, the on-base percentage for Mike Bolton Jr. is truly incredible this year. Bolton is excellent at hitting the ball and making it on base. You talked about hope uh you talked about you talked about Bonk trying to change his future and make a name for himself right here. Bolton is uh, a hard batter to start off, start off the day with. He has been at the front of the Boilermakers order for this reason. He sees the strike zone very well and gets on base. One home run, 15 RBIs on the season. And steal attempt, throw down, not in time as Mike Bolton Jr. picks up steal number 15 on the season. Mike Bolton wanted me to interrupt uh, my monologue about Evan Albrecht. Bolton is one of, is an excellent base runner. Yeah, Bolton's 15 steals, team high. And the 1-0 pitch outside for ball number two. And 2-0 count as Nick Bonk continuously checks back to second base. And he floats that one over the corner for strike number one. Sometimes having that runner on second base where you can't just get the quick, easy glance over check, that can really affect a pitcher's mentality. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not in the peripherals. It's straight up behind, so you cannot see him. And a base and a base runner like Bolton. Man, you gotta be careful. And being careful they are as they attempt to pick off Mike Bolton unsuccessfully. And Nick Bonk will return to the rubber. Bonk comes set. Throws home, fouled off, and a smooth move by Greg Goff to slimly avoid being hit by that foul ball. Something of a matador himself over there. <laughs> Believe I heard no lay. Two two pitch. Sends it home, unable to find the corner, and we got ourselves a full count with one runner in scoring position. And Brendan, how is Albrecht hitting with runners in scoring position so far this season? He is a .500 hitting when uh, runners are in scoring position, so Albrecht, an absolute. And that ball chopped to the shortstop. Two hops and a throw to first, and he gets him out. 
but he advances Bolton Jr. to third, which will send up C.J. Valdez. Bring it within one. And that pitch, a brilliant curveball, just catches the bottom corner for strike number one. Pitch coming in, misses the zone. Make it a 1-1 count. And worthy a note, we talked about the number of right-handed hitters in the Northern Illinois lineup. The Boilermakers also batting seven right-handers. As another ball comes in, Valdez scored two runs against Illinois last weekend. And that pitch, some good movement at the end, going to bring it into the zone. Valdez bats a .358 with a strong slug percentage at 46.3. Yeah, it shows he's got the power to put it out there not just to make contact, even though he hasn't gotten one over the fence this year. He's not getting the opportunities either as that last pitch being a ball. Another full count up here for Purdue. Count is full for Nick. Nick Bonk. Bonk comes set, fires home, and striking out swinging, C.J. Valdez. What a pitch by Bonk. Very, very big piece of this Boilermaker offense. He's certainly been following the advice of Teddy Roosevelt carrying the big stick as he took a big old cut there and caught nothing. 0-1 count, runner on third, two outs here at Alexander Field. Bonk. Sends that one in off the catcher's mitt for a ball. Ooh, Bolton, Bolton wanted it, but he hesitated. And the 1-1 pitch, big cut by Thompson. But swings at the air. One, two count. One on. And Thompson's also been solid this season with runners in scoring position. Batting 355, 290 with two outs. As he looks to improve those numbers. Right here. Bonk, sends it home, fouled off. And staying alive is Thompson. Just a little recap, NIU took the lead early in the top of the first with Carlos Aranda hitting an inside the park home run Getting two runs on that. Boilers have the opportunity now. Yeah, that one a bit upstairs from Bonk. Two's across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Boilers have the opportunity now, but cannot strike out here. And that one just a hair outside the zone, very close. But Thompson knows the zone well. He's not going to take a big cut there as that brings the count to full. Is this our third straight full count? Not great for the pitcher's arm, loading up on the pitch count here in the first inning. 
And full count, pitch comes in, and that ball is ripped off the bat into left field, down the line, fair. And rounding for second is Thompson, who gets himself a double, an RBI double, to cut the deficit to one here at Alexander Field in the first inning. Great job by Thompson. They, they tagged first base as they didn't seem to think that uh, Cam Thompson touched first, but umpire says, no, nah, he got there. And Paul Tate's here, down 0-1 in the count. With a runner in scoring position on second. Tate represents the go-ahead run as he takes his first ball. Tate's not the best batter for Purdue with only a 2-3-8 batting average. But he still has 20 hits on the season so far. And with 10 extra base hits, he's got a lot more power coming out of that second base spot than most would anticipate, as that pitch, I think, may have actually gone behind him. All these first inning pitches may be taking a little bit of a toll on Bonk. And want lining up for pitch number 32 out of the hand of Nick Bonk as he sends that ball foul down the third base line. Will this be another full count? Curve ball a little low and outside. Going to bring us another full count. Good call there, Brendan. Saw it coming. I can see into the future. Well, don't tell me what happens here. <laughs> I want to see what happens for myself. As Paul Tate lines up against the full count. Nick Bonk on the bump, two down. Sends it in. And that ball foul. Pitch comes in and outside the zone. For the Boilermakers with a .548 slug percentage. Two home runs on the season as well. And that one misses the zone for ball number one. And Nick Bonk on the day so far, giving up a hit, an earned run, walked a couple. And he throws one that just catches the top left corner of the zone or strike one. Jarvis having an excellent day against Illinois three days ago when he had five RBIs. But that wasn't enough to overcome Illinois as Illinois swept Purdue over the weekend. And that brought Purdue down to five losses. And Brendan, do you have anything interesting to say about those losses? Uh, those losses, actually every team that has beaten Purdue so far, Illinois State, UIC, and Illinois, they are all from Illinois. And with NIU also from Illinois, will this be another Illinois team that beats Purdue? But I don't think they'd be that worried about losing to another Illinois team. And that one catches for another full count. As catcher reminds the infielders, you got to force out at any of the three, just not home. Big pitch here for Nick Bonk.
coming in and misses the zone as he walks them loaded. I say, you know, you want to throw that ball low, uh, encourage a ground ball opportunity, uh, allow your infielders to make a play. You know, you just don't want to hang a high fastball that Washington can empty the bases with because he does have that power. As that is an, that fastball got past Washington for an 0-1 count. And that one fouled off. And that'll give Bunk a commanding 0-2 count. Will he be able to shut the door here with the Boilermakers loaded? Huge pitch right here. His arm must be gassed. Come set. And that ball is ripped into left field by Washington. And the play is going to be made by left fielder. That is Malik Peters. And the Boilermakers got ducks on the pond. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. And Malik Peters will step in to bat. Malik Peters and Eric Arato, they both lead the team with five doubles. So Peters, an excellent hitter, one of the best hitters on this NIU team. And that'll be a strikeout. Mason Kelly, only a 209 batting average. <coughs> only 67 at bats of the season. So not the most on the team, but definitely not the least. After his last round up, he recorded his 23rd strikeout of the season. Stepping in, out of the windup. Ball's chopped to the shortstop. Albrecht makes the throw and an incredible play from the shortstop to get the out at first. It's two down. He gets the ball from his glove to his hand, throws it to first base for the out. And we discussed that error, Aaron Harper at the plate actually reached on that error by Albrecht in his first at bat as he lines up for the second. And that ball is ripped into center field. Washington Jr. able to bring it in. And the Boilermakers, a quick three up, three down inning. And Troy Viola stepping in to the sweet hymn of Brittany Spears. Pitch comes in for strike number one. And that one just a bit inside in the eyes of home plate umpire Phil Puyipo. Pitch coming in. Blows it by Viola. And the one two count. No wiki unable to find the strike zone there. Two two. And catches that ball, but sends it foul. It's 
staying alive, as they say. Nowicki checks the wristband and turns his attention to home out of the windup. That one oh, a little bit wild over the head of the catcher. That one looked like it could have slipped out of hand, slipped out of his hands. And that ball is popped up. Second baseman back. Right fielder says he has it, but he doesn't. And Mike as Lanzarote will round out the Boilermaker order for the second time. Miss the zone there. 0-2 is the count. Lanzarote with his first at or his second at bat. First one was first one was a walk. And pitch comes in, misses the zone again after the visit. And Lanzarote faces a 3-0 count. And that one will cross the plate for strike number two, filling up the count here. Lanzarote was standing there waiting for the walk. Not going to get it. Another full count here for NIU. They just cannot seem to avoid these full counts. And that one tipped up down the line and foul. Coach Goff going over the direction that Lanzarote should go with the plant foot, making sure that weight is well distributed. Lanzarote, only a 167 batting average, trying to get on base or hit himself onto the bases for the first time today. And that ball chopped to second base. Easy play made. Four out number one. But with that play, Viola will advance to third base and the time. So two runs for Bolton despite not getting a hit. Demonstrating his excellent base running. And per perhaps more impressive is his eye. And Mason Rue, caught by our lovely camera crew's eyes, Warming up in the pen. Perhaps the freshman will be coming in shortly. As for no wiki, the wheels are starting to come off the bus again. You know, Brendan, I, I've heard of a pitcher's duel, but what would the opposite of that be? I guess the opposite of the pitcher's duel would be the batter's duel. <laughs> no, I, it, it wouldn't, well, we'd, it'd have to be the opposite of a duel. Oh, so you're saying like. Well, and the batters are anything. I thought you meant the opposite of the slow. pitchers. No. Oh, okay, I misinterpreted no, no. you. The, a, a pitcher's duel, of course, is a contest where two teams are playing very close due to great pitching. And I would say that today is the opposite of that. I, I, I'm going to say a batter's duel. I think that's that's a good way to describe it. As here, another ball that misses the zone. 
for the Huskies. 2-2 two -two count coming across way high to fill the count. 3-2. I'm sounding like a broken record with all the full count calls here. <laughs> NIU has 93 pitches compared to Purdue's 48. So basically, for every pitch Purdue throws, NIU throws two. And he's going to foul that one back to the backstop Ooh, for just, strike number one. Just nicked the top of the bat. Just nicked it. And with runners on the corners, Albrecht is in an interesting spot here. Hasn't yet gotten a hit today. But he hopes that his fortunes will change. And that ball is ripped into right field. And he's going to have himself an RBI single as the deficit is erased. 5-5 five, five ball game. Pitch coming in. And he'll sail it over the strike zone for ball number one. You said Valdez with the three RBI double in the third. That was such a key moment for Purdue. Down five to one, needing to put points on the board. The three RBI double, clutch hit from Valdez. And that ball takes an interesting bounce as Mike Bolton Jr. will break for third. And just like that, runners on the corners for the Boilermakers. That ball didn't even make it to the plate. And with the ball being a little slicker, you're going to see that happen more and more. Good defensive play there by Latham, able to keep that ball down in front of him. Excellent awareness to grab the ball and control it. And Albrecht will take second. They'll fake the throw down, but just trying to get Mike Bolton Jr. to jump unsuccessfully. So with two in scoring position, Valdez stands in, 2-1 count. Will we see him get another few RBIs right here? Something else to keep in mind. Third baseman's playing rather far back, very fast runner on third. Could potentially be a bunt situation for Coach Greg Goff. Big fan of the bunt. I don't know, I, I haven't seen Valdez lay one down yet this year. That has a... And misses the zone for ball number four, and the bases are loaded. He's already struggling on the day, four walks, giving up three hits, and now he faces Purdue's best batter with the bases loaded. And one out. Nowicki's still looking for his first strikeout. Four walks, no strikeouts. And that ball hit down the line. And they'll tag him out. It was an interesting call because I, th I thought that that ball went foul before it went fair. But Tate has been walked twice as well. In fact, he's he's only been walked 10 times this season, so already a fifth of that so far in this game. And pitch comes in just a bit high for ball number two.
Come set. Delivers out of the zone again, third time in a row. And Paul Tates. Watches ball number four as the bases are loaded yet again. Basically an invisible man thus far. Gotten on twice, but no true plate appearance. As he will watch ball number one. This time, I don't, well, you never complain about getting on base with the walk, but definitely, I would say, celebrate a walk here because you then automatically send a man home. And the Boilermakers do have the lead now, 6-5, to five, here in the bottom of the third. And pitch comes in below the zone for ball number three. Three oh pitch. And the umpire calls that one a strike. 3-1 count. Will we see another ball here? Or another walk, I should say. Nowicki has already walked five. And that one also called a strike. Ooh, that one was close. And that'll fill the count up for Jake Jarvis. Another one, another full count. Earlier you were talking about maybe we need to come up with a different name for it. Maybe we should call it the NIU count at this point, or the Husky count. We might as well. And speaking of the Huskies, that ball was fouled off into the Husky dugout. Everyone seems to be all right, though as Jarvis gets prepared to face the full count. Pitch comes in, and ball number four, as Evan Albrecht will walk the last 90. Mason Rue, who's pitched four games with an ERA of 3.38 on the mound now for another fresh arm for NIU. And his first, his first pitch will go down as a ball. And Washington Jr. started off the season red hot for this Boilermaker squad out of the two spot. He has since seen himself slide down into the seventh spot. And that ball ripped up the middle, and one will score. A second is rounding, and will easily walk over the plate to expand the Boilermaker lead to four off of a two RBI single from Curtis Washington, Jr. Excuse me. Feels as if we're working a full five to nine here today, or nine to five, I should say, with the score. 
considering we are only three innings in and we have seen 14 runs of offense on 10 hits from both squads. Would you say the rain is, has been a huge factor in the increase of offense due to, I guess, the rain hindering the pitching? I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, I'm not holding the ball, so I don't know how slick it is out there. I, normally, I wouldn't say that I would anticipate the rain would be this great a factor. I think this has just kind of been a rough pitching day for both squads, but the rain certainly isn't helping. As that one comes in, jammed up, sends it shallow center and caught by the second baseman. As the Huskies escape the inning, not without giving up five. Saw Landon Wines warming up, but they will postpone him coming in after Wines had a three up, three down inning. That seems like ages ago after the Boilermakers had a five run rally in the bottom of the third. And that ball is absolutely ripped foul on the right hand side. I find it quite impressive that Wade is still, still on the mound pitching for Purdue, whereas NIU, they've already gone through three pitchers, or they're on their third pitcher right now. It's only a matter of time until Wade probably subs out. But the last inning he pitched, he did an excellent job. Blazevich watched one of his eyes there, rips it between third and short. And he is on with a single to start things off for the Huskies. And he will watch strike number one cross the plate. Wow, them only a 100 batting average. He does, however, have a hit today in his lone plate appearance. He Moved does. that average up to 129 on the season. And I think another thing to note is that he only has 30 at-bats this year. So not too many opportunities, but today at least he's making the most out of them. He is standing in for at-bat number 32 as he is watching the 1-2 count here. Delivery, and that ball is sent into center field. Washington Jr. running in, gets under it, and makes a play. Throw to first, and ball will actually leave play. I believe that made contact with the runner, but it just doinked right off of his foot, and it's going to go out of play, resulting in him getting two additional bases, which is going to put Blazevic all the way on third. The error there by Purdue, just trying to possibly get the out, but instead it results in NIU getting a player on third base. Washington frustrated with the poor throw to first. Yeah, they definite, it looked like a high IQ play there by Washington Jr. for a minute because the runner was very far off the bag. It was just an unfortunate bounce that sent that ball way off and into the opposing dugout. It was a great idea, but poor execution. An unfortunate turn of events for Purdue. And that one will miss the zone for a 1-1 one -one count. Wade shakes off the signal, finds one he likes, comes set, delivers, misses the zone, lands a rotate, will block it, and recover. Pitch comes in, misses the zone, 3-1 count.
And that ball's ripped to the shortstop, picked up by Albrecht, throw to first, is in time to get the out. The long hop into the first baseman's glove can sometimes make those throws a little bit quicker and easier. And a bold attempt on a bunt there with two outs will go just foul for strike number one. And Wade comes set, delivers, and a disgusting cutter finds the middle of the zone for strike number two. Pitch comes in. That one was low, but Lanzarote able to grab that one and not let that one go through his legs like one of those pitches earlier in this game. And, you know, out of conference play with, with baseball is a little bit different than some other sports in the sense that it's mixed in into the middle of Big Ten play. And Purdue is coming off of losing three in a row to Illinois. So, you know, you have an opportunity like this against a, a mid-American conference team to come out here and potentially get some, some circumstantial play, allow, allow your bullpen guys to come out here and play a little more. And the Boilermakers have let the Huskies flirt with being in this game for a few innings, and that ball is ripped into left field and caught by Bolton Jr. as they do what I was going to advise them to do. Taking care of business there for the second inning in a row, the Huskies will hang a zero. The so score is nine to five when we come back. Bottom of the fourth here on Big 10 Plus of the last inning. Quite rainy and quite, quite windy. As you can see those flags blowing in the outfield. Not necessarily what we would consider baseball weather. Every weather is baseball weather. You never know. Opening day for the MLB coming on Thursday. I anticipate there will be a lot of games with this weather as Pablo Lanzarote launches that ball into deep center field. Play made back by the wall. Excellent catch by Matt Barnes. It looks like he doesn't want it to be as he takes a big cut there. It's foul. And while getting on base is, is great, and, you know, the sabermetrics era has put a, a lot of emphasis on it, I think the players still like to get a hit every now and again, but so far Mike Bolton Jr. not been given a lot of pitches that he's gonna be able to take a hold of. And he'll watch a second ball there. Mike Bolton Jr. though knows his zone so well really plays with a ton of poise. As he'll watch a third in a row. That one high and outside. As you said, he knows his box. He understands where those balls are coming and when and when not to swing. And for the fourth time, he will jog 90 yards. Scoring. And the pickoff move to first was slow and just to check and make sure he was still there. Yeah, I don't blame him for doing that. You know, Mike Bolton, even though he's walked three times, he's scored every time he's made it on base. So three runs for Bolton. Worthy of note, Bolton already has two steals today. 16 on the year. One of the best base runners here for Purdue. Never want to get him on base, but they've got him on base. 
four times off of walks. And you know, that's, that's just something you can't afford to do. That ball hit over towards first play made by the first baseman unassisted for the easy out at first. For the Boilermakers, most impressively to me, getting on base at a 483 rate. Very impressive. Valdez, big cut, catches nothing. For strike number one. Pitcher comes set, delivers, and misses the zone. Aside from that two RBI double in the second, he was also walked, and after he was walked, uh, he was able to make it around the bases to score a run of his own. Man, Ooh. big cut there. Big swing. T.J. Valdez definitely looking to score a runner. With that big a swing, that batting 346 with runners in scoring position. That was one of those swings where the saying, swinging for the fences, I think he was swinging for the road on the other side of the stadium. And long pause, pitch comes in and strike number three. First strikeout for Mason Rue gets him out of the inning. Where if you're loving watching Kyle Wade, this is your happy day. You're getting the fifth inning of him. As he comes out here in his first start to deliver strike number one. Wade starting the game off quite rough, but pitched two straight really good innings allowing zero runs. And, and field's getting fixed up here as now attention not just being given to the mound, but a lot of opportunities around. Uh, in case if you missed it, Matt Barnes did get a hit and designated hitter Carlos Arada is actually getting, or they're going to pinch hit him for Brandon Johnson a lefty sophomore outfielder steps in. Johnson has struggled to put bat to ball so far this season. 143 average on the year. Johnson also only has seven at-bats, so not many attempts at all, this being his eighth. And the pickoff move found nothing over there at first as Kyle Wade comes set and tries it again to no avail. But even with those seven at-bats, he has one run, he has a hit, and he also has a triple, so. Although it's there's a little bit unknown about Brandon Johnson, there is uh, some high potential. And a throw down to first, as that'll be the third time They've checked in on the runner on first, two off the mound, one from the catcher. As the count is 2-0. Oh. Oh, 
And that ball was hit a mile in the sky and into the grass off the field. For or technically off the field, not the stadium. And that ball is ripped into center field. Washington wow. Jr. running back. And it is over the wall. Home run for the Huskies. And that'll light a spark for the Huskies. An excellent pinch hit opportunity here from Brandon Johnson as he puts one dead center probably 415 feet out. And just like that, we got a two-run ball game here following the two-run shot from Johnson. Check his teammates out all over him after that amazing hit. What a, what a, just what a bomb down center field. Brandon Johnson giving this team a little life after two, uh, two blank innings. And Malik Peters steps up to bat after striking out in the third. And I, I would say that's a successful pinch hit, if you can have one. I'd say that's pretty, that's as successful as you could possibly be. <laughs> and that ball is hit, dribbled into center, and they've got another runner on. And the Boilermakers warming up in the bullpen. It's perhaps a bit expedited now. Man, stepping in. And that ball is ripped foul off of the bat of Kelly. That is Mason Kelly, first baseman. Kelly with one stroke. Uh, he's already struck out today. And after an unsuccessful pickoff attempt, he will turn his attention to home. That swing a little bit late. And pitch coming in for strike number three for Nolan Daniel. That was a nice pitch. Moving pitch on the inside. And Aaron Strong will step in. Pickoff attempt, unsuccessful at first. Come set, pitch coming in, and that is a strike. Well, and Daniel comes set. And that ball is ripped into right field, collected by Jarvis and sent in. And that's going to be a single which will put runners on first and second with one down. Now in comes Jake Blazovich with a single in the fourth. Another single right here could possibly put the base is loaded. But as NIU is down two, ideally. That ball's ripped, collected by Albrecht. Force out at third. 
And a, a hesitation by Viola is not going to allow him to turn the double play at second. But they will get two outs. And that cutter will attack the zone. Four strike number one. Pitch comes in for strike number two. Pitcher comes set, pitch in, and Lanzarote unable to catch a ball that was seemingly easy to bring in. It's going to allow on the pass ball two runners to advance. Hey, find a way. Find a way here. And pitcher will come set. Sends it in. And that's another pitch that hits off of Lanzarote. There's an opportunity right there. Possibly. But NIU did not want to risk it with two outs. Certainly not on anything that close. I mean, you're, you're in good position. Aside from the two strikes, you'd hope that you can get an RBI. And Latham here does represent the go-ahead run. As he faces a full count here from Nolan Daniel. And strike number three will send him packing. With two on and in scoring position, Nolan Daniel clutches it out with the strikeout. And we had a we had a start time that was almost an hour and a half ago. We are on the bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth. Two and right. Almost two and a half hours ago. Well, regardless of the time, we got 16 runs here and a <laughs> nice hit. That was absolutely ripped at the shortstop. Great play. Excellent effort by Demetrio to bring that but ball in. He's had a rough season on the batting average, batting only 77. And he'll watch strike number one go by. Yeah, power is not necessarily living up to the name of power. And unfortunately uh, is out. That was a good hit, but Aaron Harper's extra effort on making that play. And makes now Jake Jarvis steps up to bat. Jarvis has walked in his previous two plate appearances. as he watches his first pitch, which is a ball. Mason Rue delivers a pitch, and it'll be a strike just at the bottom of the zone there. 1-1 one, one count, two down. And that ball is ripped down the right field line and just foul as it'll uh, fly out of the arena, but quality contact from Jake Jarvis. Mason Rue definitely uh, 
looks to be the best pitcher so far, or at least putting on the best performance today for NIU. And Looks like I jinxed that one. I was going to say, we mentioned the announcer's jinx earlier. As he let go of that one a good bit too early. And that will bring the count to 2-2. But as I was saying, there are only two strikeouts for NIU's pitchers, and Rue has one of them. But you don't necessarily have to get strikeouts to be a great pitcher. You just... But you got to throw strikes, and you have to create outs. And that's something that NIU has really struggled with today. While they've only allowed five hits, they've allowed a whole lot of base runners via walks. As that ball is chopped to first base, tossed to the pitcher, and tagged out at first. And he'll be facing Nolan Daniel. He had an effective last inning for the Boilermakers. Daniel had an effective last inning minus the home run hit by Brandon Johnson. That actually was not given up by Daniel. That one was given up by Wade. Oh, excuse Dan me. My apologies. No worries. Daniel did give up one hit, but he also got two strikeouts. And Daniel takes a look, comes set. One two pitch coming. Delivers and misses the zone. Pitch coming. Contact made towards second base, fielded, and the out made on the throw from Tyler Powers. Unfortunately, uh, cannot add to it here unless he hits a homer and homers himself around the bases. But That one was fouled off towards the Purdue dugout. And that will be strike number two as Daniel is ahead 0-2 in the count. Corrado also has a multiple, or he has actually three multiple RBI games. Currently he has zero, but with two more, he could have his. And Barnes, Barnes uh, is actually tied with Arado for the lead in multiple games with for NIU with seven, but Barnes has already had two hits today, so as it stands, he now has eight. and is looking to push ahead if Arado can't uh, get another hit the rest of the game. Daniel comes set, delivers, and just misses the top corner of the zone, 2-1. And that ball is fouled off. And it'll bounce back into play. 2-2 two -two count. Nolan Daniel, two down. The delivery. That ball fouled up and out on the right-hand side. Pitch coming, and just a bit high for the umpire as that'll bring the count to full. Barnes only batting 267 on the season so far. So not the highest bat batting average. And also to point out batting 240 on two out situations. Doing a heck of a job of staying alive. A lot of foul balls here as Daniel delivers. That ball is ripped up the middle. And he's found himself on base. 
Barnes for the third time today has a hit. So his third hit of the day to tack on to his one run and two RBIs. Down center field. Almost caught Barnes off first base right there. It was a good pickoff move from Daniel. And he'll go to it again. Thompson unable to hold on to the ball. And it seems that the tag would have been just a moment late anyway. Got to keep him honest, though. And that one, no call for ball number one. And if you'll look, the infield has adjusted. Second and short, both with their feet in the grass. And the pickoff attempt will actually hit Barnes in the hamstring, but he seems to be all right. Barnes hesitated. He almost ran for it. He almost went for the steal, but decided that that was not a good decision and I agree I Purdue was even though uh, Albert couldn't or not Albert even though Thompson couldn't hold on to the ball right there he would have been able to throw it to second and if you look here the throw will come in and just doink right off of the leg And that pitch is a strike, bringing the count to 1-1 for Nolan Daniel. That pitch was nice. Fastball down the center. Mike. And with that, Daniel pull ahead in the count here. One, two, two down, one on. Pitch in and Johnson will rip it down the left field line, but foul just off of the locker room. Daniel comes set, delivers ball, ripped into the gap in right center, and that's going to be extra bases. One is going to score, and Johnson, a stand-up double, came into today with one hit, and that is his second of the day, second extra base hit, a home run, and a stand-up double. What a great job by Johnson. I mean... You have earlier the two-run home run, and now you send a man home with this bomb to center right field, splitting both outfielders' production. Talk about a game for Brandon Johnson. Malik Peters enters the game, one for three on the day so far. Peters, another player with three multiple RBI games. Peters is tied for the lead with five doubles as well. O2 pitch. And strike three. Daniel fans him, but not before the Huskies are able to hang up another. 
week number seven, eight, and nine. This could be a very big inning for the Huskies. Huge inning, and it all starts right here with Curtis Washington, who had a two RBI single in the third. He starts off with the bunt. And got way too much of the bunt there, hit it right down the third base line. the good defense or the good outfielding by NIU. And you were talking about the momentum and swinging the momentum. NIU has kind of grabbed a little bit of that momentum after that first uh, after that or f after that first home run by Brandon Johnson. They start off, they go, they grab that 5-1 lead at the top of the second and then Purdue, they come back. They hit the 3 RBI double, then they score 5 in the third and then kind of a stalemate in the third and the fourth. But then at the top of the fifth, NIU starts getting that rhythm again, gets that, uh, gets the home run, and then they get another uh, RBI by Johnson. And so now it's an 8-9 game. Purdue hasn't scored in two innings. The pressure's kind of back on them to do something right here. Contact made. Play made by the shortstop. And a great effort put forth there by Dem Muttrell. And coming up to the plate, going to be Pablo Lanzarote. Lanzarote, not been a super reliable bat for the Boilermakers. He nearly wore one to the ear hole there as that ball was high and inside. Woo! That one was close to smacking him in the head, but turns his head out of the way just in time. Pitch comes in, low and outside. One count with two outs right here for Rue. And that ball is ripped into left field, running backwards at the wall and gone! Pablo Lanzarote for the second time this season is rounding the bases as he extends the Boilermaker lead to two. 10 to eight here in the bottom of the sixth as Pablo Lanzarote Gets all of that one. Lanzarote, but on those four walks, he has scored three runs. So despite not getting a hit, still being in, still being very effective once getting on base. Yeah, and there you'll just see, right when he knew it went over, you seen that you see that run turn into a jog. As Lanzarote gets to take his trot around the 360. Those must be the best feelings as. A player hitting a home run, turning that full-on sprint to a nice jog around the bases, knowing that you hit a home run. I personally would enjoy it if they still went full sprint all the way around. <laughs> like Brandon Nimmo on a walk. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen him, folks. Uh, Brandon Nimmo is an outfielder for the New York Mets, and every single time he gets walked, he will full-on sprint to first base and it makes my day every time he does it. Count is 2-2 on Mike Bolton Jr. I will say, if I saw a player running around the bases, that would definitely get me amped up. And he's gonna watch strike three as Mason Rue gets out of the inning, hanging a backwards K, Mason Kelly. Kelly with two strikeouts already today. Obviously, you hope that you don't strike out this time and at least get a hit or get on base with a walk. And for Kelly, he's uh, he's he's been playing effective defense today, 
thwarted a few base runners for the Boilermakers, but offensively unable to get really anything going as Nolan Daniel has been doing a stellar job for the Boilermakers. One earned run given up and four strikeouts across two innings of work. And that one will just fail to find the zone, bringing the count to three to one. And that one gets way past for the walk. And there we see a nice jog to first from Mason Kelly as that'll send Aaron Harper up to the plate. And that one not quite able to find the zone. 1-1 one, one count. And that ball's fouled off, one, two, count. Whew, that one was close at first. And Landon winds, lines up, delivers, ball's caught. One of the two and not going to try for the double play. A little bit of a stutter there from Tidler Powers, but out number two. And Wines coming set. Picks off towards first. To no avail. Latham with a 268 on base percentage with a 212 slug percentage. As we said, he had the hit. And that hit out also uh, batted in another one of his teammates. And then... He was able to make it around the bases himself for a run. But aside from that, Latham uh, struck out earlier as well. Pickoff move over to first again. Also unsuccessful. Pitch comes in, strike number one. And that ball is ripped into right field. Deep and back, bounces and connects with the wall. Jarvis picks it up, throws it in. One will score, and that is a stand-up double for the catcher, Latham. And just like that, we got a one-run ball game on this absolute tear off of the bat here. Caught all of it. Timing was just a little bit early, so it's going to allow him to hit and throw that ball out to the right field line. And it's a one-run ball game. 
here at Alexander Field once again. Andre Demetrio at the plate. And he'll watch strike number one. Wines has two more strikes to end this inning. Let's see if he has those in him. Gave out a two-run double just moments ago. Throws one in, just misses the zone. Bring the count to 2-1. Pitch in and fouled off as that'll even the count to two, two down and a runner on second. So this would be the go ahead run that is at the plate and Andre Demetrio. That one will miss the zone, filling up the count, 3-2. Big pitch right here for Wines. You let up one run. Make this only a one-run game. Can you close out the inning right here? Wines comes set, delivers. And that is strike number three. Gets him swinging and gets him out of the run. When he was up to bat. So experience showing that, or it's showing that you don't need the most experience to make a big impact. As he will face off against somebody with a decent amount of experience, senior Evan Albrecht, who watched struck num strike number one blow by. And that'll be a 1-1 one -one count after the ball. Misses the zone. That one over the middle, but not, not in the zone for the umpire. I think it might have been a bit high. 2-1 count. That one finds it, 2-2. Two -two. That one definitely in the zone right there. Albert warming back up. And we got a 3-2 count here. Full count for Evan Albrecht, a 517 on base percentage guy. And he'll slap that one up the middle. No one's gonna make a play on it and he's got himself a single. For Valdez, he does get a lot of extra base hits, but he doesn't have a home run yet this year. He's just really good at putting the ball in play, making his way to first base. It, it, he does his job well. And the pickoff move here unsuccessful, but where the throw to be a little better, might have gotten him. Evan Albrecht looked a little bit scared over there. Pitch to Valdez for strike number one. Oh, 
And pickoff attempt to first, unsuccessful. Two strikes for Valdez. Another pickoff attempt to first on Albrecht. Very concerned about him advancing. Pitch comes in. And he'll hold. That'll be a 1-2 count. Lined up, pitch comes in, misses, steal in second, throw not on time, and Evan Albrecht has got himself a stolen base. Good job by Albrecht. Albrecht is pretty speedy on the base path. Contact made by Valdez. Valdez shortstop picked up, throw and in time. That was a, a really nice play there by the shortstop Demetro. He was covering second and he had to Put in a lot of effort to get over there. Having about as good a year as you could ask to have. Batting 341, slugging 729. Slugging 729, that's another just crazy stat right there. His power is ridiculous, hitting the ball. 36 RBIs. And a lot of those come from RBIs when he hits a home run. Situational hitting is certainly one of Cam Thompson's fortes. It's like whenever that bat hits the ball, it is out of here, or at least it is flying. Pitch coming in, big cut, catches nothing, one, two count. As a reminder, one down, runner. And that ball gets away from the catcher, and Evan Albrecht will stand up, jog on in to extend the Boilermaker lead to 11-9. That is a two-run lead for the Boilermakers. So Lutz gets the go-get-em tiger, or should get the go-get-em tiger. Or should I say go-get-em husky? A go-get-em husky. Go-get-em That's husky, yeah. Very clever, very clever. I try my best. <laughs> All right. So the count is full for Thompson now. After seeing three balls in a row. 3-2 count. Lutz. Fouled off the handle by Ooh. Thompson. If Thompson is going down, he's going down swinging. And that ball is ripped Ooh. into left field, jogging back and able to get under it. Play is made as Cam Thompson will be the second out of the inning. But my goodness, that ball went a mile. In after grounding out last time. Two outs and no one on base. Let's see if Powers can make something happen, get the ball in play. With a name like, like Tyler Powers is just a baseball name. 
there, there's some guys that they just have a name that I hear it and I go, that's a baseball player right there. And with the last name Powers, you got to be a ball player, right? Oh, yeah. And I know I've said it previously on broadcast, but I remember the Lafayette Central Catholic teams he was a part of were an absolute force in 1A and beyond, recognized for their ability to beat just about anybody any given night. Powers was instrumental to those teams. Now an instrumental part of this Purdue team looking to snap a four-game losing streak. Well, he may be instrumental. He's switched from first chair to second fiddle as Paul Tates has kind of emerged as the starting second baseman. And it'll take a kind of lazy cut there to bring the count even to full. Another full count. The Husky count. Oh, you see Pitch the frustration. In. Makes contact. Ball down the third base line. Third baseman slips, unable to make a play, and Tyler Powers will reach. And that pitch just misses the zone. Jarvis with one ground out and three walks, so... Jarvis has been getting on base, similar to Bolton. Let's see right here if he gets on for the fourth straight time, or not fourth straight time, but the fourth time of the match today. Jarvis has nine RBIs on the season with two home runs. Woo! That one sent right to the NIU dugout. Set Pitcher comes set, delivers, and Jarvis will foul it off again. Time constraints. We now move ahead in the action. Lining up here, Joseph Whitman for his first pitch. That one just misses the zone. Some serious heat on the fastball. Whitman delivers that ball fouled up and out of the complex into the parking lot. Let's hope that one didn't nail a car. Nah, just. And Whitman comes set. Delivers downstairs. No dice. Two to one. Pitch coming in. Misses the zone. For ball number three. That one a little bit low to the right. Sinks down low to the right. Hanzarote makes the catch, but nothing too crazy about that. That is his job after all. And that one misses the zone, and that's going to be a walked-in run for NIU. So the walked-in run decreases the lead to seven, 17 to 10, Purdue over Northern Illinois. 
If you're just looking at the scoreboard, no, this is not a football game, but the scoring sure seems like it. As Jonathan Latham comes up to bat, Latham having a great day today and his opportunities at the plate. The Boilermakers have been struggling back-to-back midweeks. They really uh, had some major issues at UIC. They gave up 10 runs there, a lot of which after they had a large lead. And they've given up 10 runs to the NIU Huskies today. And the Boilermakers will get another shot at UIC over at Curtis Granderson Field in downtown Chicago as that ball is lined into deep left field. And the coach's arm is a swinging in a windmill fashion as two will score on the stand-up double. And look at that. Cut the lead to five. Keeps Purdue on their toes. This game is not over yet especially because NIU, they don't have a single out. And Demetrol walks up to bat. But first, let's take a look with this line drive to left field. Their coach motioning, NIU coach motioning their players to run in, get to home. And they make it there with runners on second and third. And I'll repeat, you know, you is no out, so. They're, they're in a, Northern Illinois is starting to get into that rhythm. If you're Purdue, you 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 need a good pitch right here. You need a good uh, series of pitches. And Joseph Whitman, one one count here. Working on one of the few regulars we've seen this inning. I believe actually the first in Demetro. My apologies. I believe the last batter also had appeared previously. And here comes the pitch, and a late cut will mark for a strikeout for Joseph Whitman. That One down. That was a nasty pitch right there to get the strikeout. Let's let's check this out one more time. Sinks down and draws the swing and a miss. What a pitch by Whitman. Anything since then. And contact made there to second, but due to the shift, they're not gonna be able to get a play and another run will score. Runners on the corners, as Tyler Powers may have overplayed that shift a little bit. Runners on the corners and a runner come home. Northern Illinois, only one out, but still in it. They are chopping away at this lead. Start of the inning, it was 17 to nine. Looked out of reach, but all of a sudden, 17 to 13. After four quick runs. One out count. Whitman, the left-handed pitcher, 
pitching against the right-handed Northern Illinois batter, Barnes, Matt Barnes. So Barnes has the advantage here going up against the left-handed pitcher. And as Charlie said, runners on the corners. Runners on the corners, yes. As the count is 2-1, Joseph Whitman coming set. As perhaps his replacement is warming up out in the pen. Will Purdue have to go to a third pitcher this inning? They might have to. As it's now a three run count and a walk would load the bases once again. Whitman delivers and finds the bottom corner of the zone to fill the count 3-2. Huge pitch by Whitman. He's got one strikeout. Let's see if he's got another. And that ball hit into the gap between second and third, and a run will score. Runners stay on first and second as the lead is cut to three. Ho, ho, ho. Northern Illinois is not done yet. This grounder over to, here comes this grounder over to Viola. And he dives for it, but it's just out of reach, but it bounces off the palm of his glove. So it allows Northern Illinois to bring in the run. Now players on first and second. Brandon Johnson stands in here. Two for three with that big home run and that double. And that power could be significant because he does represent the tying run at the plate for the Huskies. Oh, man. Imagine he hits another home run to tie this game up. Now, wouldn't that be something? And that one misses the zone. That's will be to make this a 1-1 one, one count, one out, two on. And he did not go, make it a 2-1 count. Let's check this out. That one's a bit low, out of the box. And he did not go there, did not break the plane of the plate. 2-1 count. Whitman comes set, delivers. Inside brings the count to 3-1. Purdue started this inning out with Jet Jackson trying to close out the in it, close out the game with a 17 to 9 lead. Jackson can't Jackson gets subbed out for Whitman after letting up two or three runs. Whitman has let up two and it's a 17-14 game at the top of the ninth. And that'll fill the count 3-2. Whitman v. Johnson, count full, stakes high. Whitman comes set, delivers, and fouled off the end of the bat by Johnson. Oh, what a lucky foul. I think Johnson thought he struck out. The way he grabbed his head, it looked like a look of disappointment, but he's got one more opportunity right here. Perhaps a look of relief. He's given another shot here, three to two. Delivery. And that one is strike three. Backwards K strikes out looking. And that one's a big one for Whitman as it puts the Boilermakers one out away from ending this. Whitman with his second strike right down the middle. 
to end the game. Charlie, do you think he can do it? I'm not going to provide any insight onto that. I, I will say I think Hildebrand has the tools to make it happen. I think NIU's very hot right now. They got the bats working. We're just going to have to see how things pan out here. Because uh, Tyler Thierry, who actually started this inning batting, they have batted around. He will get another crack at it. And that'll be strike number one for Hildebrand, who made a leap and caught the ball, which was a little bit overthrown by Lanzarote, but no harm, no foul. And that pitch a bit inside, 1-1. Pitch comes in. And here comes the pitch from Hildebrand. One, two count. Delivers strike number three. And this one is over. Boilermakers win it 17 to 14 after Hildebrand shuts the door in the face of the Huskies. And it certainly wasn't a pretty one, but the Boilermakers hustle out to end the four game skid. <laughs>